Department. My name is Masha Koliko, a teacher of biology. So today again, uh, we still continue the, the topic genetics. And uh, for today, we are going to look at a uh, use of symbols uh, in genetic genetic diagrams. So when we are talking about the use of uh, symbols here uh, to represent uh, genes in chromosomes, letters are always used depending on whether it is a complete dominance or incomplete dominance or other uh, codominance. So uh, it, is, uh, it is customary that, uh, or in other words, it is known to use a capital letter for the dominant gene characteristic and small letter for recessive one. So the gametes are encycled. That means that you have to use a perfect cycle. For example, a cross between a tall and a short pea plant is illustrated as follows. We are going to let the capital T, just as we have said there above there, that the capital T denotes the dominant gene. That gene uh, that is um, expressing itself phenotypically both in its heterozygous and uh, homozygous state. Then we are going to use a small t to represent the gene for shortness. In this case, uh, when uh, a short, uh, a tall pea plant, that is parental, talking about parental uh, phenotypes, the physical outlook, then we are going to say there is a tall pea plant and a short pea plant. That is uh, the phenotypes. Then we have uh, parental uh, genotypes, now the genetic constitution genotypes. We are going to have capital T, capital T, because we have said the capital T denotes the, 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 the dominant one, crossed with a, a small t, small t. Then we have the gametes here. When we have the gametes now, the gametes are said to be in cycle, and it must be a perfect cycle when they segregate like that. Let us mark the point where we put the cross, and it must be a perfect uh, cross. The cross is supposed to be put on the genotypes. Many a time students put the cross here, which is not right. Cross is put at the genotype to show that what you are crossing. So we have this, uh, if we, we work out now, like that, we have the capital T small t, then we have that, capital T small t, we have this, capital T small t, then we have that, capital T small t. So this is a first uh, filial generation. In the first filial generation, you can now see that we have crossed here. The symbol that we have used is the letter. Alternatively, when we are selfing the first uh, filial generation, that is now capital T, small t, which uh, phenotypically are tall, we can use what we call a Punnett square. A Punnett square. When using a Punnett square, the first thing is to write the genotypes. Assuming that we are now going to uh, self this, we have genotypes now become capital T, small t, crossed with capital T, small t. Now, if you are drawing your Punnett square, Punnett square, This is uh, what we are having here. So when you want to put the, uh, the, the, the symbols here, we, we make a cross from the top left corner. Not this other way around. When you do it the other way around, then this other one on top will not be crossed. So assume that we are having a conventional symbol here to denote uh, the female, then we have the male here like that. Then we put our capital T there, then we have our small t. Here again we have the capital T, small t. So when we want to start crossing, 
When we cross this with that, we get capital T, capital T. The capital T and this, we have capital T, small t. This with that, we have small t, capital T. Then that one, we have uh, small t, small t. So when you look at the offsprings here, that is capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, small t, capital T. Then uh, we have small t, small t. You can now see that uh, the two, uh, we have uh, where there is a capital here, that denotes the tallness. So we have three tall, uh, the ratio, Mendel's ratio, three tall to one dwarf, which you can see uh, from that uh, cross. So let us look at uh, what we refer to as the uh, complete dominance. When we say something is completely dominant over the other, uh, Mendel happened to uh, choose characters that showed complete dominance. That is, uh, the dominant trait completely masked the recessive one in F1 generation. That is why when a tall uh, a pea plant was crossed with a, a dwarf pea plant, the F1 generation were all tall because the gene for tallness was dominant over that which is uh, dwarf. So in man, for example, uh, certain characters are inherited in the same way. For example, color of the skin, which is either no all color is dominant to that of albinism. Let us see what we are talking about in that case of the normal color uh, or skin pigmentation. It is known that uh, through substitution, the gene that determines the skin pigmentation is denoted capital A. But at times you may find that we have capital A and the capital A small a. So for one to be an albino, then the two parents must be a carrier. A carrier here to mean that capital A is dominant over small a which is defective. Same to capital A which is dominant over small a which is defective in this case. So we are going to say, uh, if we, segre uh, we, we now segregate them to form gametes, we are going to have capital A, we are going to have small a, capital A, small a. Then when you now cross them, we are going to have a person with a normal uh, skin pigmentation. This one here, uh, capital A, small a. Then we have uh, capital A, small a. Then we have here an individual having an albino because the what the normal uh, uh, gene that determines the skin pigmentation is uh, replaced by a defective one. So this is normal, normal, normal because the gene that uh, manufactures the uh, correct skin pigmentation is dominant over the one that is defective. So in that case, we are talking about a uh, color. Uh, of the skin. Other characters that show complete dominance in human beings are ability to roll the tongue. There are those people who are able to roll the tongue and those that are not able. So we, you are either a tongue roller or a non-tongue roller. But if you are having, uh, you are a tongue roller, then the ability to roll the tongue makes you become dominant over those that individual who is not able to roll the tongue. Then we have what you call polydactyly, uh, dactyly, having more than five digits in one limb. That is, you may find somebody having an additional, additional uh, limb there. So that is, you either uh, have the five, which is dominant, or you have the sixth one, which makes you uh, uh, not to be dominant. Then we have what you call brachydactyly, having short fingers. There are individuals who are having normal fingers and the, the ones who are having short fingers. So the normal fingers become dominant over the short uh, fingers. Then we have what we call a chondrodiplasia. That is dwarf with a bow length. There are people who are uh, characteristically are too short or maybe they are just dwarf. There are individuals, that is a character that is uh, recessive but the others are the normal uh, stature is always uh, okay. When we come to incomplete dominance, then we are going to talk about uh, this is the kind of uh, inheritance where there is no dominant or recessive 
gene, but the two genes blend in the offspring. Uh, so the resulting is blending of the characters. So the gene for red, for example, red color in cattle and the gene for white color denoted W show in complete dominance. What we mean by that is that if, for example, a red flower, for example, crossed with a white flower, white flower, the resulting offspring, instead of being red or white, they blend so that we have RR crossed with them. W, W. So in this case, you can see that we are going to have genes that are RW. All the four offsprings will be RW, like that when you cross them using the, men, the normal Mendelian fashion. So this one here is not, you cannot say it is red or white, but instead it can come up with a color which has blended from the two, which is pink. So the appearance of the pink color is as a result of the blending of the two. That is what we are calling uh, incomplete dominance. So the offsprings are neither red nor white, but are intermediate of the, between the two. That's why we are talking about the two. So sometimes if it is in animals, then we call it wrong. But in flowers, we can have red plus uh, white, uh, cross with the white, but we have what? We have a pink flower. In human beings, the sickle cell gene and the normal gene are codominant, which uh, we are yet to see what is uh, codominance in that case. So when you take a talk about the two, now we have seen that the terms that we use here uh, these terms, use of symbols, we have seen where you use the different letters. Then we have also seen uh, what we call complete dominance, where one gene completely expresses itself than the other, which is recessive. Then uh, we have seen a situation uh, or maybe other characteristics that are, are there in individuals, like in the case of tongue rolling. If you are either a tongue roller or an untongue roller, but if you are a tongue roller, then you are dominant. Then having more than six fingers, having normal, uh, normal fingers which are five digits, uh, you are normal or that is dominant, but having the sixth one makes that person become uh, incomplete or maybe uh, recessive. So then again having short fingers or uh, uh, as compared to the normal fingers. So the uh, normal fingers is dominant. Then you also have the dwarf people with their bowed legs. So those ones are characteristics that uh, we have seen. And uh, now, in incomplete dominance, where there is no allele that expresses itself phenotypically. So it means that uh, the two colors blend to bring up a color that is not of uh, the two uh, characters. So in that case, we can now uh, see that uh, the two colors are neither red nor white. Or in that case, we call them run as it is in animals. So we have other characteristics that are shown by incomplete dominance. So that is uh, the end of our lesson on these uh, symbols of today. Thank you.